and we're back. Uh, <clears throat> hasn't been too long since the last video, so here's a here's an update on how we're doing. Um, you can you can see they haven't really. Um, I refilled these once, I think. They haven't really been taking a lot of uh, sugar syrup. It's kind of getting getting dark. You can see the, the sun's going down. Um, so I'm going to try and make this quick. Um, basically just taking a look to see... I think there's a nectar flow going on, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking to see... If you remember last time I added a, uh, a box here, I added a medium. And I'm going to take a look and see if they built out anything. So let's let's take a peek. All right, so let's take a peek. These uh, these guys are really active, and it's probably not the best time of day to be doing this because they're all back from foraging, and there's a lot more in the hive. Uh, I don't know if this is just heavy because it's heavy, or this is going to be interesting. Let's see. Well, they're definitely up here in the second box now. And I see some comb in there. Let's take a closer look. Okay, you have to take a look at this gorgeous frame. I haven't even had it out yet. Look at all that honey. This is foundationless too. This is completely straight comb built on a totally foundationless frame. So let me try and pull another one out. See what they look like. So here's the funny story. So for a while. So I can put this up here higher. For a while. We've been uh, smelling the smell in the backyard, and um, at first we actually thought it was the baby's diaper <laughs> a while ago, and um, we, uh, we figured out it wasn't that. And here's a foundation frame. Let's take a look. This is just loaded with honey. Look at there's some cap too. Really dark honey. So anyway, the smell <coughs> was, um, every night we'd come out here and walk around, and we'd smell it, and um, I, I just assumed it was some kind of plant, so I'm kind of right. Um, turns out it's actually the bees, so finally got, got up close to them at the right time, and I smelled kind of like this, it's like a musty yogurty kind of smell. I think it smells like yogurt. And um, wow yeah look at this. Look at that frame. This was foundationless. Look at all that honey. So I'm not, I don't have a lot of time so I'm gonna kind of speed through this. Basically, all these frames are just packed full. Um, there's one foundationless on the end here. It looks like they haven't gotten to. They're probably still drawing out this foundation. Um, this one's foundationless. It's probably pretty full. Um, yeah, just doing an amazing job. So, um, anyway, when I find out the smell seems to be coming from the hive, I looked online, and um, one of the most worrying things is a disease called American Fowl Brood. If your hive gets this, you have to you have to burn the hive. It's it's so contagious and so bad, and there's no no, no treatment, so you have to just burn everything. Um, and it, one of the signs is a bad smell. But this smell has been happening for weeks, so I I thought, well, I should have seen other symptoms and I don't think they're doing too bad they're really looking strong well come to find out when goldenrod and aster flowers flower um, they make some really interesting honey that some people love but beekeepers will tell you it smells 
really distinct. <laughs> Some people like it. I think it's kind of an interesting smell. But a lot of people describe it as uh, sweat socks or uh, a locker room. Um, so there's uh, a lot of those little flowers around. I don't know if you can see, you can't see any from here, but but um, but the goldenrod's in bloom, and there's all those little flowers around my yard, and I think that's that's what it is. And there's definitely a flow on because there's been a lot of activity, and they're just doing a great job storing this nice dark looking nectar, making honey. Um, and they're not even like uh, feeding off the sugar water that much, so um, so I'm going to assume that some of this stuff in here um, is uh, is just pure pure nectar, pure honey that that I can uh, harvest some of L a little bit because they need all they can all the help they can get going into winter. But I think I might be able to steal just a little bit. Um, all right. So what I did is I moved a. Um, a full uh, uh, foundationless frame that was all drawn out with comb to this end here because there's one foundationless um, right here and there's one foundation um, that's not fully drawn out so because this is closer to the center they're going to be more apt to, to fully draw these out. The rate they're going though um, I think I'm going to have to uh, give them even a second box. Um, got one coming coming after me. Um, this is the most active I've seen them, and and so they're they're wanting me to get out of the way. So I'm going to do that because I don't know much. Ah, oh, poor firewood. <laughs> this hive has just had nothing but trouble. So I decided to call this one firewood because it's right next to the firewood pile, and the other one is I'm going to call it blackberry because it's next to the blackberry bushes. I'm real creative. So um, you know that other hive. It, just always it's been strong because it came from a nuke, and um, even though it's got a late start, they're already miles ahead of these guys. Um, oh. If you remember, I had to um, had to kind of fend off some robbers, and now that there's a flow on, there really shouldn't be any robbers, but you can see. Oh, okay, so they filled this back up, and that looks like actual honey. Maybe some, uh, some, uh, Sugar water. I got All right, it's ridiculous that I'm still out here. Uh, I ran out of memory space. Um, this is uh, just the only time I'm going to actually be gone all next week uh, for a uh, work conference, and so like I just don't have enough time. And it looks like this weekend I'm going to be building a new box because uh, I think they're going to need it, and um, it's going to be a mess. I hope. I mean, hope not, but I think it's going to be a mess with all foundations, which is the only frames I have. But Anyway, yeah, so, um, I don't remember, to look back at the other video, um, none of this was drawn out for sure, but I don't remember any of, any of this is new comb, but they're still way behind the other, the other hive. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with these guys yet, um, but at this rate they're just not going to make it into the winter. Um, so yeah, so a little bit more about that smell, now that I got a, a battery and a, uh, uh, enough space on this. Um, it's interesting that um, I never really thought about it, but we were only really smelling it towards the end of the day, which is when we're out here. But uh, you know, you come out in the morning, and you know, other times, and it's just not, uh, you know, <clears throat> you just don't smell it. So it like wafts and stuff. But I thought it was a plant or something. But but what it is is um, after they collect all the nectar. They, uh, at the end of the day is, is when they sit in the hive and fan it, and they, they dry it out, and that's what turns it into honey. They have to get it down to a certain, like, uh, you know, moisture, and, um, and that's when all the scent comes off. So, really interesting that, you know, I'm smelling all this, all these weeks, like, on and off, but definitely later, lately it's been the strongest. So, um, it makes sense that we've got, like, a fall honey flow coming on, and... Um, you know, the honey's looking dark, which it usually is in the fall, it's lighter in the spring. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm psyched that they drew out all those, all those frames in the other hive. I'm really disappointed that they didn't, uh, draw these ones out, but apparently I gotta keep feeding them. 
Um, I just bought 50 pounds of honey today to Costco, and so I got that. So, so I got time to make up some more syrup and um, and feed them. I, I don't know why they're not foraging as well as, as the other hive. Um, and um, the other hive is so strong now that I don't know. Um, this isn't terribly weak hive, you know. They're kind of bouncing back, but but um, but I don't know. I still might I still might combine them um, if it looks like these guys aren't going to survive the winter. But anyway, maybe uh, I'll do a special video this weekend. I've got some company, and I might have just a little bit of time to get into uh, into blackberry over there and, and cut out a little square of some uh, of some uh, fall goldenrod foundationless honey and we'll uh, we'll give it a taste um, so we'll see maybe that'll happen this weekend if I get to it uh, but like I said I also think I have to prepare a new box and get it in there if, uh, if they the flow is still on while I'm away they're gonna need a place to store all that nectar so good news mediocre news um, still uh, really interesting to me um, it's always a surprise like I said um, you know and uh, I'm so glad I have two now because uh, I can can compare hives now and uh, and uh, I don't just have one wondering what's what's going on so I have kind of like a barometer with the other one it's a healthy hive I didn't even get into the brood nests um, this inspection um, it wasn't a real inspection I mean it's you know look it's it's, it's getting dark um, I shouldn't even be out here this late but um, it's the only time I had so um, I'm going to assume that they're doing healthy. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to do a mite count in the future. Um, and you'll see what that's all about when we get to that. Um, and thinking about doing some, some treatments to uh, make sure they go into the winter healthy. Um, so we'll get all into that in the next few episodes. And um, that's it for now. And stay tuned for the next one, hopefully. A little short one of us uh, actually getting some and tasting some honey. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.